Now, just to kind of give people a little understanding how we interpret or how we look at some of the labs, pretty simple. So we want some of the markers here on the labs to be in the middle distribution. So if you look at my screen here, can you see my screen, Evan? Perfect. Okay, good. Excellent. I'm going to just make sure that you can see me as well along with that. Okay, so in general, we want these markers to be somewhat in the second to fourth quintile distribution. If they go on the extreme high or low, we always get a little bit concerned. And we get more concerned if it's near a red area. So there are some of these markers are two-tailed, meaning let's say number seven citrate, where there's a red on the left and the right. And some are one-tailed, or say most are one-tailed, like adipase, suberate, ethylmalonate, where there's only a red to the right. Does that make sense? It does. So two-tailed means red on both sides. One-tailed means red on one side. And of course, if, if markers are low and we're closer to a red, that matters more. So we want there to be somewhat distribution in the middle. Extreme highs or lows are more concerning, especially if they're grouped together. Now, so in this section here, fatty acid metabolism, we see them on the lower side. Not as big of a deal because this is only one tail, but we do keep that in mind. Uh, we look in the carbohydrate metabolism. You see you're in the middle here with that lactate, which is one of the more important markers. Um, beta hydroxybutyrate being higher. Isn't that big of a deal? Because that's a ketone. That's a ketone. That's not that big of a deal. L-lactate. Um, is a marker for CoQ10 typically. And uh, pyruvate is a marker typically for B vitamins and B complex as well. Um, so this being a little bit low, less than detectable limit, isn't that big of a deal as long as you don't have a whole bunch of them there, but we do keep an eye on it. And I always tell patients uh, chronically high organic acids, that's like a demand issue. So it's like you're making a million bucks a year, but spending $2 million a year. You have a lot of income coming in, but your demand for that money, uh, for those resources is high. So functionally, we're still in debt, right? And when we're chronically low, especially in areas where, they're, where it's two-tailed and red, that's a sign that there's a depletion issue. Depletion, it's like you're making 10,000 bucks a year. Um, but spending a hundred, right? You're making a lot less, right? There's not a lot coming in, but but you're you're still spending more than you're making, right? So both, in the end, you're in debt. Okay, that's kind of the analogy I give, and I always tell patients, well, what's the root cause? Like, you know, we always want to be focused on the root cause. We we may be doing palliative support, people can feel better in the moment, but we always want to get to root cause support. Now, with organic acids, pretty simple. First is going to be diet. It could be a macro issue, and or a micro issue. Meaning if someone's eating that looks like a healthy diet, but it's not organic, well, it may be significantly deficient in certain nutrients, right? Um, if you look at Joel Salton, uh, who runs Polyface Farm, he found, he sent his organic uh, eggs to the lab and they looked at the amount of folate that was in his organic eggs. There was 20 times more folate in his organic eggs than the typical conventional store-bought eggs. So organic matters. It's not just pesticide. Pesticide is important. It's a big part, but it's also nutrition. So of course, eating organic makes a bigger difference. Food quality makes a big difference. Um, and then number two is going to be absorption. Absorption can be affected by uh, gut microbiome issues, parasites, fungal overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth. It could be affected by low stomach acid and enzyme and bile salt levels. It can also be affected by food allergies, chronic food allergens or chronic inflammation in the intestines can, can drive it too. Uh, number three, just general stress. Stress can be categorized as physical stress, right? You're exercising too hard. Maybe you're too sedentary. Maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe your emotional stress is off the charts and that's throwing off your cortisol and your adrenals and your hormones. Stress plays a big role. Number four is toxicity. Toxicity primarily from pesticides, heavy metals, mold toxins. Pesticides, heavy metal, mold toxins are biggies. And then number five is genetic. Genetic could mean, hey, you just need more magnesium. You need more amino acids. You need more B vitamins than the average person just for who you are. Could be an MTHFR issue. You're not, you need good high quality folate. That cheap folic acid stuff is not cutting it. You need more methylated B vitamins. So Genetically, there could be just some uh, imbalances in regards to what your biochemical needs. I think uh, Roger Williams wrote a book called Biochemical Individuality, talking about people's need for certain nutrients can be exponentially higher than someone else's. And so those are kind of the big five things out of the gate. Any comments on that, Evan? Yeah. So one thing I think it's important to point out is people get really caught up in the DNA and the genetic testing. And, I, and I'm yeah, cool with it. I, I, I'm cool with it. But I, I just want to highlight something you said here. 
which is that we're really going to be looking more at the downstream effect of any of those genetic predispositions here, correct? Meaning, let's say that there is a genetic predisposition to needing some more folate or some B vitamins upstream, but then that manifests downstream. We're going to see it here. We're going to see the citric acid cycle. We may see some things off of this carbohydrate metabolism section. So what I'm saying is not that the genetic stuff is useless, but that you and I are going to see the result of those genetic issues here. Is that correct? And the, the, you, you might not need that genetic data because you're going to be looking here at what the actual body has. Is that true? 100%. Yep.